I have two little sisters and I'm constantly giving them older sister advice. Here's mine to you today. I am literally known for my smell. Anybody that meets me and some of the first things I comment on is, oh my gosh, you smell so good. How do you do that? Or what are you wearing? I switch up my perfumes all the time. So it's not my perfume. It's my method of how I put my perfume on. So my dad had a lot of stripper friends and I grew up around a lot of guys that always talked about how good strippers smell. I guess they have a really strong perfume smell that lasts all night, that like lingers and like goes on them, et cetera, et cetera. So a friend of my dad's that's a stripper <laughs> taught my dad, who then taught me when I was like 10 years old, what strippers do to smell so good. When you get out of the shower, you put on any lotion. I actually put my lotion on in the shower when I just dry off when my pores are open. So I immediately put on lotion, okay? Step number one. Step number two is after you're all ready, go ahead and spray your perfume. My choice today is Joe Malone Jasmine and spray it everywhere. Also, the leg, okay? Okay, we're good. Now, take some more lotion and seal it. So we're gonna put some more lotion on. The scents don't have to match, they just like need to be in the same plain field of scents. So these both have a very like floral, nice scent. And then take that lotion, put it on your legs. And we're just gonna go two more times tops. I'm telling you, you are going to smell so good. And everyone's gonna ask you what you're wearing, how you smell so good. You can thank my dad who was friends with a lot of strippers. This is Big Sister Advice on everything I think you should know as a teenage girl. Never let anybody take advantage of you. Whether it be verbal behavior or sexual behavior, if you don't feel comfortable doing something, saying no will not make you a bad person. You need to respect your values and respect your comfort zone. If you're always following what other people do and only like things just because other people like them, you will never know who you truly are. Everybody finds out when you say something negative about somebody else. What you say about others says more about you than it does about them. Your creativity and imagination will not be as big as it is now. Being smart is cool, so don't play dumb. Following that, it is okay to ask teachers for help. It does not make you a loser or stupid if you ask for help. Be confident, but be humble. Do not compare your body to somebody else's. Comparison is the thief of joy. Big sister advice from your big sister in Christ while I fold my laundry. So I asked y'all in a poll what you want advice on and let me just say, I am very concerned. No, I'm kidding, I'm not. But there was a lot that you all wanted advice on. So today, we are gonna answer how to deal with stress. Now I'm sure you're all thinking, oh, Elizabeth, you probably never deal with stress. Or if you do, you probably handle it so well. I'm glad that you all have confidence in me, but that is far from the truth. I was very stressed out this last month for various reasons. And I kept saying to my mom, I just don't understand why this is happening. And one thing that she reminded me of was Proverbs 3, 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. She said that most people remember trust in God, but they fail to remember most times to lean not on their own understandings. And I tell people all the time that they better be glad that God is the author of their story and not them. If I was writing my story based on my own understanding of my own life, my own life would fall apart. I would hate to be the actual author. But since I'm not, I need to trust that God understands my situation and my life so much better than me. I just have to wait for that book release to come out. So when it comes to stress, just remember that God has you exactly where he wants you. You may not understand it now, but eventually you will. Here are some more things that I wish that I took seriously sooner. Number one, the 48 hour rule. 
if you're upset with someone, maybe they said something that didn't sit right or you got into a disagreement, whatever it is, you have 48 hours to address it or you get over it. I started practicing this in college and it really helped me learn how to address conflict and not let my feelings and emotions sit in a box and then later down the road, I'm still mad about something that happened eight weeks ago. Number two, the transition from teenager to adult happens very quickly. Like there's really no intermission and there's definitely not a snack break. Like you literally wake up and you're just like, boom, an adult. And that leads me to my next point that you don't need to have everything figured out right now. I mentioned this in part two, but I'm gonna mention it again because I really need y'all to hear me. You can make as many plans as you want and just like that, your plans will change. So you don't need to know right now what company you're gonna work for in the future and what age you're gonna get married and what time your kids are gonna be born. Like just let life lead you. And if my life went exactly how it was planned, I would be engaged and in medical school right now. So life had different plans for me. And if you wanna hear more about that, let me know. Number four, intentionally practice selfishness. The more time that you spend respecting your own needs, the more respect others will have for you. I've said it before and I'll say it again, you cannot fill anyone's cup if yours is empty. Here's some big sister advice that makes being a teenage girl a lot easier. First of all, crowd following destroys your personality and just strips you of all your unique qualities, so don't do it. If a guy you're interested in is acting like he doesn't like you, believe him, he doesn't, and walk away. If people that are popular tell you that somebody's weird or they've done something, make sure that you investigate that person yourself before jumping to conclusions and agreeing with these popular people. Because most likely, the weird people are the best type of people that everyone should be friends with. I remember having a conversation with these girls that were supposedly my friends, right? And they were known as to be quite popular. And they said to me, they came to me and they were like, we really don't like this girl. She's this, she's that, she's horrible. And I know this this girl for a fact had, in all the time that I'd known her, she had never said a bad word about anyone, which is just a massive green flag because like, come on. um, She literally was so kind. And I said to these girls, I was like, really? But she's so lovely. Like, I literally love her. Um, and they looked at me and they were like, uh, 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 they didn't know what to say. And they're like, you're a bitch. And then from that moment on, literally never spoke to me again. Like, we're like, um, and they went around, they were like, she's horrible. She's literally so horrible and crazy. And she did this and this, that like rumors that I didn't even know I'd done. I was like, okay. Anyway, lol. But I stay friends with this girl because she's great and weird and crazy. And like, we love people like that. So the moral of that story is if people are calling people these things, make sure you say your opinion instead of going, yeah, she's, she's this because it just ruins you as a person. And finally, if you're, if you're a nice person, you're probably not going to get invited to things. If you're pretty, people are going to be jealous of you and hate you for no reason. There's just so many things, so many lists of things. Just remember to be nice. Never say a bad word about anyone and you will strive in your life and be weird and creative. Okay, we're gonna have a little big sister chat while I get myself unready, okay? So I'm about to put you on a piece of advice that when I say you have to take and you have to listen to, just do it, just do it. If you are talking to a guy, messaging a guy, seeing a guy, in a relationship with a guy or girl, either or, works both ways, do not, and I repeat, do not prioritize them over your friends. Don't do it. I feel like I need a megaphone to scream this at you. Please don't do it, don't. And I'll tell you the main reason why okay god my hair is so greasy please you know things might be going so well with this person this new person it's, that's in your life they might be going amazing you might think it's your next future husband future wife your future literally in front of you okay so you're like i need to i need to think about this i need to no, no, no shush shut up okay they have been in your life for like a blink of a second in time, okay? Your friends have seen every single side of your life. They have got you through the highs and the lows of your life. They've been with you through everything. This person has come along and sure they might be like, oh, it's so exciting, they could be my everything. They could not be your everything. Your friends will still be your everything. 
if you don't fucking drop them. Like, you don't know what's gonna happen. God forbid this thing that you're in ends. We don't want to think about it, but what if it does? Who's who's gonna be with who's gonna be there for you? Because the person that's ended things won't be there for you because they've ended things. Your friends will be there for you. So keep them and rely on them and listen to them. I feel like friends actually sometimes know you better than you know yourself because when you're in a situation you can be blinded by things but your friend they keep it real they keep it honest and they know you better than you know yourself and yes i know some friendships can be toxic and some people can like not like the person you're with however if it's a non-toxic friendship and your friends are telling you that they don't like the person you're dating listen to them because they're seeing something that you're not okay and vice versa as well, if the person you're dating isn't making you prioritise your friends or understanding why you're prioritising your friends, get rid! S fucking see you later, kick them out the door because that's wrong, that's so wrong. And vice versa, they should be considering their friend- no, oh, They should be considering their friends' feelings. Not compromise, it's consideration. I'm giving you big sister advice because I'm a big sister so you can trust what I say. Number one, if you're about to go out with a girl you don't know that well, think about it. If you were face down in the ditch, like could not move, could not speak, would she make sure you're okay? If she wouldn't, don't go out with her, don't be her friend. Piggyback off of that, if your mom has a bad feeling about a girl, don't be friends with her. If you have a little tiny inkling feeling that like maybe she's kind of a mean girl, maybe she says things to undermine you, don't be her friend. Always trust your gut. Wear sunscreen every fucking day. You know this one already. Just do it. Buy an eye sunscreen, wear it every single day. It's part of your skincare routine now. Get used to it. Okay, and I've had this conversation like seven times recently, so I feel like I just need to put it on the internet. Do not take ibuprofen or Tylenol if there's any alcohol in your system. Oh, AKA when you're hungover, especially not Tylenol. It obliterates your liver and your kidneys and all of your internal organs. I know this is like the nursing student in me talking, but seriously, don't. Like after you shave your hoo-ha, use baby oil and your legs too. Do not stay in a relationship just because it's not bad. Girl, what are we doing? Oh, we've been together for three years. It would be like throwing those three years away. Like nothing's really bad between us. Listen to yourself. Does he still bring you joy? No? Get out of there. It's not wasting the three years you've been together or 15 years you've been together or the six months you've been together. It's wasting years where you could be happy by yourself. Okay, last piece of advice. You can splurge on all the makeup you want, but don't ever buy an expensive mascara. The $12 drugstore mascaras are where it's at. It's not something that needs to be expensive. It just isn't. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. I love all of you. Bye.